<laughs> that party's impossible to have in that part of the game. Only took me till the very end of the playthrough to be able to sit at my in my chair before the intro was over so I could mention that part, but you know. <laughs> Alright. Let's return to the sea one last time. Even though there's a bonus episode. But we'll talk about the bonus episode once we get out of the cave that we're in. By uh, beating two bosses and listening through approximately 40 minutes worth of dialogue. Doesn't that sound like fun? <laughs> yeah. Crawl, oh, no, it's already the end. I'm cross. I see what you did there. Hello, Sefiko. How you doing? Welcome back. We are just a couple of minutes out. Probably just a minute out, actually, because that intro is long. That second intro, so I'll take a drink and then we'll get started. We'll wrap this bad boy up. Shouldn't take too long. I, uh... With this way my schedule is with school in uh, the fall semester, which starts tomorrow, I probably won't be streaming on Sundays anymore because I have to get up at 6.30 on Monday mornings, but I have afternoon classes um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so probably Monday nights and Wednesday nights. So it'll probably be similar to the summer semester where it's like I streamed Monday, Wednesday, and then either Friday or Saturday, depending on the week. So it'll probably be pretty similar to that. I do have to be careful, though, because my last class gets out at 5.15 on Monday and Wednesday, so I have to get home. By the time I get home, it'll be 6 o'clock, so hopefully if I get home about 6 o'clock, I can eat and then start the stream and then go from there. But um, that also means I have to make sure that I get all my homework done, and we'll have to see how that all goes. We'll feel out the schedule as the semester goes along, but for now... We won't worry about it. We'll just uh, move right along by taking our party and taking the fight up to the Dragon God, who is waiting for us at the top of this tower. We beat all the Guardians, so now it's just a matter of confronting our fate. How you doing, everybody? Welcome to the finale of Chrono Cross, the stream edition. This is the party of three we'll be taking up to fight the Dragon God and uh, their stats and generally how they look. I'm pretty happy with where we ended up with stats for the most part. I think Lena got a little bit stat screwed in the strength department, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with where we ended up. So, uh, yeah, and then I think I just need to make a couple of little adjustments. Actually, first thing I'm going to do is I tested this fight after the stream yesterday with the Master Mune just to see, okay, well, maybe I'll give you one time so you can see just how powerful this thing is. No, no. <laughs> It's, like, way excessively too strong. Like, the, the attack power is deceiving. The Spectre Swallow's critical hit rate because of the lack of... Because the um, Master Mune is effective against basically every enemy type in the game, its effective damage is way higher than the attack power lets on. And virtually every level 3 hit is a crit, so... Uh, just to preserve some of the difficulty in this game, we will go back to the Spectre Swallow, and we will attempt to make it difficult enough to where it will actually do something for me. <laughs> Give me any kind of challenge whatsoever. Uh, I'm also going to make a couple of changes to the allocations. I'm going to take this turn red off, and this bad eye off, because we won't need it. And I'm going to give Draggy the eagle eyes, and we will give uh, Norris the... Uh, instead of that, we'll give Norris the turns, uh, the turn spells. So, like, take this off and take this off. And then, how do I want to do this? We have them in a specific order because it's the order that the uh, boss is going to uh, change its own. Basically, this is going to be a long boss fight. That's what I'm kind of getting at. It, but these are in the order that the boss is going to change its own elemental type. So we can kind of stick them in that order and just go down the line. So let's see. Red, green. This is blue. So this is where turn red goes. And then uh, all these need to move down one because I need another turn black for at the very beginning. Although I guess I don't really need another turn black at the very beginning. But I'll do it anyway since I got the extra slot. Uh, this boss fight is... 
a little bit more bizarre than the other ones, and one of the reasons why I was going to use the Master Mune is because this boss actually has, apparently, according to the FAQs, 15,000 HP, which is a lot to cull through, but it goes a lot faster than you might think, especially when it's switching forms and doing all that other stuff, so... We'll talk about it when we get there. But either way, I'm going to give Draggy. Uh, he has 99, but I'm going to give him the Eagle Eyes as well. Just so that that way... Oops, i got to go backwards. Uh, that way he can handle all of that stuff, and he's basically going to also be on healing duty. Whereas Norris is basically going to be... Build up your element power, get turn black, or turn white, or turn red, turn blue, yellow, green, whatever I need for the specific form that the boss is in and that will be his entire job for that fight so there we go that's the plan also i'm going to get lena and norris red or er, lena and norris lena and radius ready because uh well i need to give radius back his eagle eyes that's where all those eagle eyes came from and actually are they on surge right now they might be on surge so i'm gonna be able to give them back to them yeah they're on surge so i'll take them off because we're mostly just gonna have surge attacking in this one so we'll take them off of him, and I want to give him, actually, I'm going to give him set up for the fight after this fight, basically, which involves giving Surge and Lena and Radius the same setup as the Cryo Sphinx setup. Because remember, that was the review session. The real thing is coming up soon enough. So uh, let's see, we have him with yellow, red, green, so you need blue, so Aqua Ball. That's good for you. So you can hang on to those. Now we'll get uh, Radius and Lena ready. Let me do Lena first. That way it's taken care of. And then I can give Radius back his, uh, whatchamacallit, his eagle eyes. Now these, as far as I know, don't have to be attacking elements. You could use a turn element instead, and that'll do the same thing as what I'm doing with this. But uh, I'll put them as attacking elements just to be 100% sure. So yellow, red... Radius needs green, Surge has blue, you get the other Graviton. Boy, it's a good thing we got this as a drop from somewhere. I don't even remember where we got it from, but it's a good thing we did. It's a lot easier than me having to take it off of Surge and give it uh, to Lena. Well, I guess it's not a lot easier, it's somewhat easier. But, you know. Uh, so we need green, we'll give you Aeroblaster, and then white, we'll give you Photon Beam. Because if I'm going to have Radius doing anything, he might as well assert his dominance by shooting Kamehamehas at the final boss. Why not? And Sonic Booms. So he gets to be Guile and Goku at the same time. That's great. <laughs> uh, but other than that, I think we're good. Let me just check Lena and Radius's equipment. Uh, yep, you're good. And for Lena... Uh, yep, well, we got the Power Seal here, but I think I'm going to give her back the Resistance Belt, actually, because... Uh, even with the power seal. She wasn't really doing a whole lot in the damage department, so I think I'll just give her this back. Let her support Surge, since he's the big damage dealer in the party. Pretty much no matter what, like, he doesn't really get stat screwed like some people do, because he's in the party so often that his stats just end up evolving into the massive stats that you see before you here. Uh, pretty much naturally, so it's kind of hard for him to get screwed over in most playthroughs. So, But either way, uh, I think that's it. Let me just save one more time since we got all that stuff together. All right, I'm not sitting on the save point. Hang on. There we go. And now we can save. And that's about it. I'll stick it right here just because that way it's on the same slot as the other one. All right. Time to confront our destinies. Draggy, Norris, let's do this. We'll save Lena and Radius in the back for the second time around. For the encore. And in case you missed the review session, we did it with Cryo Sphinx last time. We don't need to know the order just yet, but the Dragon God is going to remind us of the order. But the order also showed up down below this teleporter. It was yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. Still feel like it's missing something, though. We're gonna have to figure out what that is, hopefully soon, because otherwise uh, I get the feeling this thing's gonna get driven to the brink of absolute insanity. So We'll see what we can do. All right, off we go. Press the button, lower the scaffolding, I guess. This little 
relief mural. Looks like it would be something you could read off, but there's nothing on it. So, instead of that, let's just move on. Oh good, the uh, screen tearing effect is back. What do you mean, help? I haven't even started the fight yet. But apparently you already really want to die. Don't tell me you're pulling a Sigma from Mega Man X6. Sure, you would know that too, wouldn't you? Oh, listen, I've had to kill a few things to get here, so I'm ready. Let's do this. I just wanted to go home. The killing didn't have to happen, but you wanted this, so here I am. Not being able to walk in a straight line <laughs> to get to you. Welcome, Arbiter. What type of destruction would you like to commit to today? Hi, Lavos. You, uh, shrunk down since the last time I saw you. You look a little bit more on fire this time. Oh, yeah, sorry. I was so distracted by the fact that you said the word Struth out loud that I just did something incredibly stupid by touching the frozen flame like a Dark Souls 3 character. Well, I don't know why I did that, but sure. Why not? I guess we'll all get knocked over. I'm good. It didn't do any damage because I'm not in battle. What do you mean, us humans? I have a dragon right here. <laughs> like, if anything, this is a negotiation because... Draggy is a part of the Draconians. He's technically the last living Draconian, other than the Dragon God, and, well, that's going to end pretty soon, so... If he's not willing to back down when a Draconian is standing in front of him, then he's already beyond help, I think. You're asking me that? You had 65 million years to figure this out. You've been alive for longer than any of us. And you still haven't figured out the answer to that? What have you been doing this whole time? Like, that's... That literally is survival of the fittest. You were literally around when that was the way of the world. <laughs> and you didn't think to think about that until... Just now. You're asking the wrong person. I'm a teenager, okay? I can't answer Philosophy 101 questions. I haven't gone to college yet. That's not much of an answer, kid. Well, technically speaking, he does have a right to deny that. He is God, after all. But this is a JRPG, and if there's one thing we do well in JRPGs, it's punch God in the face. Big fan of the final boss music as well. It's pretty good. Definitely, uh, I don't know if it's like, real. It's it has that sort of like oppressive sense to it, but it's also like gets you pumped up to fight them. It's not the kind of one where it's triumphant, where it's like you're definitely gonna win. It's more of a like, this is the strongest being in existence. Good luck, you know. So, big fan. I like it. What do you mean, time devourer? I thought it was the Dragon God. Well, that's a weird name. Okay, whatever. Uh, so, excuse me, I think first things first, let's start building up our element power. We'll let Draggy go first so we can get Eagle Eye on Surge. We'll let Norris get the first turn. And by that I mean turn black, I think, is the first one I have in the order. And once we get that up, uh, Surge can go absolutely insane with uh, his Spectra Swallow. And that's the flow of the fight, basically. Have Draggy do the healing, or the eagle-eyeing, or the 99-ing, and uh, then have Norris build up some element power of his own, so he can inflict the turns on Surge, and then just go from there. Okay, then. I was gonna say, if he does that multiple times in a row, I mean, 
Pokemon tried to do that 20 years after this game came out and everybody hated it, but I guess this game gets a pass because it's from 1999. <laughs> so that sort of like... That like robotic looking movement doesn't really bother me. <laughs> Not here, anyway. Alright, turn black on Surge. He's got Eagle Eye already, so... Do I get the Minish up? I probably could get the Minish up while I'm like in the very beginning of the fight. So, uh, let's do a 3-3 and then get that up. That's some pretty good damage you got there, Surge. Now, the way that the fight will work is that he, as I said before, will change forms over time. So, uh, even despite the fact that he'll change forms over time, the Diminish will remain for the entire fight. As will any traps that you set, so I'm gonna set a black hole trap here eventually as well. I might set it now, depending on what goes on here. Nope, this is a phase transition. So when you see that happen, and he opens the ground to this Sliders universe, uh, this is a phase transition. Ow! Okay, never mind. Uh, but the phase transition will take you to different places from your journey across the islands in the El Nido Archipelago. You should recognize this place is where we fought the Earth Dragon, which means that the Time Devourer is now yellow in eight. So you don't even have to look to know what he is. But if you need to look, it's in the little list of things there. So there you go. Uh, okay, so now let's get a black hole trap going. Just in case, because when the black innate comes up, I definitely don't want to get hit by that. So let's just do this real quick. Having a tornado uh, trap probably wouldn't be a bad idea for my particular party either, because my party has a yellow innate in it. So having a... Uh, the tornado trap would probably keep Norris a little safer than he's going to be, but you know, it's okay. We don't have it. And then you can just overwrite the turns with uh, another turn, so that's what I'm gonna do real quick. And then we'll just have Surge do a 2 2 3 uh, for the remainder of the fight, basically. Go from there. Ran out of Eagle Eye, but that's okay. Now, you would expect the Dragon God changing its innate to be like the other bosses that we fought here, where it would want to use the same element multiple times in a row so that it could make the field all one color. But instead, it will attempt to prevent you from getting the field all one color by casting random elemental spells, not necessarily to deal damage, but mostly just to change the field effect so that you can't get an advantage. And, I mean, I guess it's a defensive option, but it doesn't really do much for his damage output, at least not for the first few forms, anyway. So, but we'll see what we can do about it. Uh, still haven't taken very much damage at all, so I'm just gonna kinda slap it silly and go back to Surge. I could have eagle-eyed as well, but I'm kind of okay with it where we're at, so. What's life without a little risk, right? Plus, I mean, I could just go to Draggy's turn right now, do a uh, level 1 attack, and then use Eagle Eye on Surge, and he'll be uh, able to, whatchamacallit, do uh, a 2-2-3 two, two, again from there, because he'll have full stamina at that point. But I think I'll go to Norris so that we can get uh, turn blue up now that we're in red and 8 country. I'll just shoot while I'm at it, though, because why the hell not, you know? Might as well get some damage off. Help Surge out. So it doesn't feel like he's doing all the work this whole time. And this is the flow of the fight, basically. It's kind of a rhythmic fight. I kind of actually like it, even though it's not particularly difficult. Like, at this point, I've already surrendered to the fact that Chrono Cross is not going to be particularly difficult, even all the way to the end. But, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's fine. But this fight requires a little bit of brain power. Just a little bit, because, you know, you've got other things that you need to account for. So, I'll take it, you know, it's fine. Now, the Dragon God will take 60 years to cast a spell, because he has this big animation where he, like, pushes forward towards you, but, you know, it is what it is, so. Uh, I think, did I, I must have gotten hit by something. I'm gonna go for it. There we go. Get the damage, and we're good. Uh, okay, so Draggy... I mean, I guess I could have you heal a teeny little bit. Um, might be worth it, because I think the next one is the green innate. So it might be worth it to have you just top off everybody. But, 
Nah, nuts to that. Let's get Eagle Eye up instead. <laughs> it's fine. We'll preserve our 99 for later because then we've got a bunch of extra element power in case we need to heal, you know. So. I was going to say phase transition. Nope, not quite. Hell Soul. Oh, okay. Well, that's a little bit uh, upsetting, but I have full revival, so I guess I can just fix that as soon as we get to the next phase. So. And we do have Diminish Up, so I'm not really super concerned. He can also cast Hellbound, which obviously would be a little bit troublesome as well, but... Yeah, as long as it doesn't hit Surge with it, we'll be fine. Oh, he did damage that time. Well, I guess he's getting a little stronger. Alright, so where's my full revival at? I think it's... Level? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Come on, Norris. I haven't told you to stop fighting, soldier. Get back up. Pretty sure this Dragon God song is playing for Draggy and not that abomination. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure Draggy has got this uh, in the bag. He's pretty strong as it is, so he. Uh, we have turned him into a bit of an elemental monster just from all of the extra work we've put into him, so I'm pretty happy with where everybody ended up. Alright, Surge can't attack just yet because he's got to get some stamina up, but that's okay. It'll probably mean Draggy will get a turn while the Dragon God casts Tornado, so then he can heal. Which is kind of good. Yeah, there it is. Just as planned, because now Draggy can top us all off with a Recover All, and uh, it'll probably hit Norris pretty hard. Okay, well, under Diminish, not so much, but that's why we have Diminish. I guess if you didn't have Diminish, that would have done quite a bit more, but... You know, obviously that's why we're using it, so... I'll just do this recover all, it should be enough. Draggy's got pretty good magic. And then just 2-2-3 two, two, with Surge again until the cows come home. And we'll be, we'll be good. I don't know where the cows are, but maybe they'll come home one day. Look at that crit! 810 damage! And if you were using the Master Mune, all of these numbers would be effectively doubled. Almost. I was... When I tested with the Master Mune, my regular level 2 attacks were doing almost 400 damage a hit with the turn spell up, and then the crits were doing, like, over 1,000 damage, so... That's a lot! <laughs> Way more than we need, for sure. <laughs> so, that's why I put it away. I said, no, that's too, that's too easy. We'll just... Let's actually make it at least somewhat interesting, you know? But the Master Mune is atrocious. It trivializes the entire rest of the game if you use it. And if you want to, you know, by all means do it. I just find that to be too simple, so I don't usually like to do it. So. Oh, and if he looks like he's casting something, but it doesn't show an element, it's because he's doing a flyover, which deals minimal damage. It's considered an element, though, so it's actually affected by diminish for whatever reason. So there's that. But, eh, it's fine. Draggy will do good damage in this phase because it's blue innate, so let's just let him beat an ass for a second and then eagle eye. Nice, that should make up for the couple of misses. And then we'll, uh... Actually, I'm gonna... Do I want to burn his 99 now? I'll burn his 99 now. Might as well while it's... Uh... While he's in the blue phase, we might as well use the opposite element. Yeah, no, that's a lot of damage! Just stab the bucket with the knife, Surge. <laughs> Just keep stabbing the bucket. <laughs> oh boy, anyway. Okay, well, Deluge will probably hit Draggy somewhat hard, but again, under Diminish, this shouldn't be too big of a deal. So, yeah, not a big deal. Not even a big enough deal for me to want Surge to... I think we have the flu, but that's okay. For me to want to have Surge uh, heal that off. So see what the, this is the kind of flow that I wanted the fight to be though, to where basically at the beginning of each phase transition, we have Norris's turn being the next turn up, because then that way he can just immediately get the turn spell on Surge, and then he can go from there, you know? So I think that helps a little bit. Having the flu on everybody kind of sucks, but I might uh, fix that, especially now since he's uh, black and eight, but I guess I could have Draggy do it with his turn, so I'll figure it out. We'll see. Yeah, I probably, uh, because right now Surge is not considered white innate because he's been overwritten in his white innate with turn red instead. So, uh, let's do a turn white to get him back to white innate, 
and then we'll have Draggy do a, uh, I don't know, a couple of hits, and then um, Purify Surge specifically, just so that Surge can continue to deal damage. Even if the others have the flu, that's fine. I'm not really super concerned about it. I'll just have them do one less attack, and then we'll be good. It'll probably mean I'll have to heal with someone else, but uh, it should be okay, I think. Um, you know what? Uh, let's just whip him with the other level two, just to get a little bit of extra damage off, and then we'll purify. And then we'll just let Surge beat him up. Should deal some pretty good damage, because we've got... Uh, our white element back. We've got two white innates on the field effect, so that's good. Yeah, that's some good damage. Now, if that was a crit right there, we'd be going straight to the next phase. We might be anyway. Yep. So the final phase, we're back to white innate. We're low on our stamina because of the flu, but we can fix that by, like, just uh, defending a little bit until the flu goes away, so not super concerned. Or again, I'll just have Draggy and Norris do a couple less attacks, that's all. Because they've got a whole bunch of extra element power, so it's not a huge deal. And we can just uh, do this. Get Draggy up to 4.8, that's fine. We'll just do a 1 2 and then we'll heal. And then we'll go from there. Okay. And then which heal do I want to use? He's white innate now, so I don't want to enable him by using it. I'll use a heal all. Yeah, all right, boss dead, stream over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops, not quite. We're almost through to the other side, but not quite yet. So. All right, Surge, go ahead and beat an ass. I could use the other eagle eye, but I'll do it when I have a free minute. It's not something I'm super concerned about, you know. All right, I think we go for the Gusto. I think we go for the level three, even if it misses. Did not miss, good. And we're still looking at a little bit too little in the uh, stamina department. So let's do this. Let's do a two and then uh, purify you. Good, we've used all your level one spells, perfect. We'll get rid of the flu for you guys and then we'll let Surge, by that point Surge should have just about enough stamina to finish this up, I think. We'll see. Uh, let's see. A two. And then do, let's see. You should have, I was going to say, another purify somewhere in here. There we are. And then just do a couple of level threes or three level twos. Something like that. We'll see what happens. I'll do three level twos. Oh, good. Ultra Nova. It's a good thing we have resistances to this and diminish. But we get to see what it looks like now. All right, and I thought Meteor Shower was over the top. <laughs> That's a pretty powerful explosion. It cannot instantly kill you, though, even though it sucks you in as though it's going to, like, annihilate you or something. I don't know. It cannot instantly kill you, though. That's the only thing that I know. So. Okay, uh, I think we need to break up the field effect. I think that's the most important thing to do right now, so let's do that by doing this and then healing real quick with something other than a recover all. A heal all will do. We don't want the field all white for the white innate, so. There we are. And then we just need to get Surge back up to his stamina, so I guess do a couple of twos. Oh good, Norris got the final hit. So instead of punching God in the face, we shot God in the face with a gun. That's pretty JRPG of us as well, to be fair. And that's it. Dragon God defeated. Nice work, everybody. Even though he phased out of existence and then immediately popped back. Yes, instead of attacking and dethroning God, we have shot and dethroned God. So there you go. New, uh, new level, 48th star level. And that's the last one we'll be getting. So all the stats you'll see here will be our final stats for the playthrough. Although I think we can still get many levels, but we won't get a, another uh, star level before we beat the final version of this boss. So those stats will be where they are at the end. Excuse me. And I guess me talking about the fact that there's another boss spoils the fact that 
technically speaking, he's not dead yet, or he was always dead to begin with, as Belthazar will so eloquently explain to us rather than showing us. He'll just tell us this stuff. I hope you're ready for the cutting room floor because the NPCs will very explicitly from now until the end of the game exclusively spout dialogue that exposits on the story. It's like a plot dump, only the plot is over and they're still dumping. Boy, that's a disgusting image. <laughs> so, how do we defeat it if it's not corporeal? Oh, consumed by... Yeah, I was going to say Lavos then, I would guess, considering this is the frozen flame right here. So, what they're trying to do here is they're trying to do another rug pull, which the rug pull that they did with the Dragon God, kind of clever. I like that because there was only that hint in the back of your mind that the dragons might be evil and they might be using you, but then they pulled it out and it was like, you know, I was hoping this wasn't the case, but now it's the case. Here, they're trying to pull the rug out from under you again by saying, no, actually, Lavos is the real villain. But there's no rug to pull, so they just end up squatting in front of you, and everybody just looks and feels awkward, and it's not a fun time. So, But Lavos is the final boss, because Chrono Cross didn't trust its own existence enough to not make Lavos the final boss. Huh. So you're telling me, by being the arbiter of the Fate supercomputer, I've indirectly linked with Lavos. That's great. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's exactly what it says on the tin, kid. It devours time. So to prevent it from devouring time, we need to fix time somehow. If you want the Chrono Trigger, you're in the wrong game. <laughs> but we killed Lavos and Trigger. Now I'm triggered. Yeah, I know we did, but... As we've proven time and time again, Chrono Cross lives to invalidate every good thing we did in Chrono Trigger. It's not thriving, though, so I guess it's not really helping it to do that. And this might sound a little familiar, because uh, the Time Devourer was the name of the Dragon God there, but it's also the name of the final boss, and we fought a, a villain in the bonus episode of Chrono Trigger that had the name Devourer in it, so, hmm... I wonder which life form it consumed. Oh no, the IT will awaken. I don't want to awaken IT. All those children in that Stephen King novel will be murdered. Again. And also it'll collapse time in on itself in a spaghettification that will destroy all of reality. So, y you know. Maybe not a good idea. Maybe we should fix that. Yeah, the clown? Yes, that IT. <laughs> he is the ultimate villain that Lavos is attempting to awaken. So to prevent that, we get another time... A How many of these do you have? Can you just make them? Or, like, are you just carrying them around in your back pocket? <laughs> so, yeah, despite Balthazar providing them with the access to time travel in the future, now he wants to fix it again. Okay, sure. Well, I don't even know who is imprisoned. But we're gonna find out. Again, yeah, I knew we shouldn't have associated with Harley. Yeah, we should have seen the warning signs, but... Oh, there was a treasure chest down there that I didn't get. Okay, well, we can't get it now. <laughs> Whole tower's collapsing, so that chest is about to sink to the bottom of the ocean. I wonder what it was. I guess I could look, but... Yeah, we're the ones imprisoned. We're imprisoned in this plot. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we're almost free. I've almost uh, chopped through the stone wall to the other side with the spoon that I got from the kitchen, so... We can almost Shawshank ourselves. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I think we're sinking, judging by the water. So we should probably leave. You know, it's this is probably why they had to put so little gameplay onto one disc by itself, is because there's so many FMVs. Just, just a thought, a passing thought. 
Well, that's going to cause a little bit of a tidal wave. Hopefully it doesn't hit the fishing village. I mean, I guess it's another world, so it's not really my fishing village, but I'd still feel bad if it did. I was going to say, and now this whole place is taking on water and it's going to sink to the bottom of the ocean, but no, apparently it's turning into some weird chromo monstrosity with angel wings made of rocks. As H.C. Bailey would say, it was a load-bearing boss, pretty much. The place didn't explode, though. just turned into a weird angel hybrid thing. Yeah, uh, guys, Xenoblade Chronicles called. It wants its Bionis back. Actually, I think in that case, because Xenoblade Chronicles was made after Chrono Cross... Chrono Cross would be the one calling to sue. I was not under the impression that the tower could transform into whatever that's supposed to be. Where did you get that from? <laughs> what makes that more powerful? It just has angel wings on it. It's going to make it even harder for Draggy to get out of here, because now he has to account for that monstrosity when he leaves the atmosphere. Did I say Draggy? I meant Starkey. But, yeah, that's the gist of it. Just take out Lavos and, <laughs> hopefully. No, I'm going to make them go back to the way they were. I will go back to the fishing village if it kills me, kid. You don't have a very good attitude about this whole thing. It's not exactly the upbeat attitude that I need from my teenager saving the world RPG. You've got a point, but... Uh-huh. And how do you propose we do that? We don't have the uh we don't have the time to run around the world and make the people sing kumbaya over a campfire, kid. We only have enough time to kill a boss. That's it. <laughs> Actually, her uh talking about this stuff here is supposed to be a hint because there's two ways to fight the final boss of this game. And if you remember the Cryo Sphinx fight, it's the exact same. You can either solve the riddle or kill it with your sticks, and you get a different ending depending on which one you do. Uh, if you do the one where you kill it with your sticks, the game basically yells at you for learning nothing and then just promptly ends and goes straight to the credits. If you don't kill it with your sticks, you get the actual ending of the game. So, there you go. Now, if this actually did inspire Xenoblade 1, that's probably the best thing this game has done besides the soundtrack. <laughs> You know, you've got a point, actually. Very Aerith Sea looking shot. Yeah, it's a cool thumbnail. I, it, There's a lot of cool thumbnail moments that could potentially happen here in the endgame, but I'm probably going to have to save the thumbnail for the final boss. So, But yeah, that's what that's supposed to be saying there. It's not her actually expositing on the plot. No, it's her trying to give you a hint about how you fight the final boss, even though it's not even remotely a hint, but whatever. So, probably, so we have to go back to Homeworld Opasa Beach, but Homeworld Opasa Beach has also undergone its own transformation since the Terra Tower uh, was destroyed, so we'll go see what that is in a moment. First things first, though, we're not at maximum full star level stuff, so I'm going to bring Draggy and Norris out of the party. They've done their job. We got through the actual final boss fight without having to use Vigor or any of that sort of stuff. So now, we will let them rest on their laurels, we'll bring in our other two party members, and we'll have Lena and Radius for the final boss fight. Uh, I just think that they have, out of the five members we're using, they have the better dialogue in the ending, so... Excuse me, you get different dialogue from your party members, depending on who you have in your party for the ending. And uh, I would say all of it's available to look up on the Chrono Compendium, but I still don't even know if the Chrono Compendium came back after that one day when it was taken down. I don't know if the gateway error was ever resolved. So, By the way, since this isn't actually my house, you can go here to rest, but this Komodo will charge you to rest, if I remember correctly. Oh, maybe not. Thanks, man. I would rest at home, but 
I'll have plenty of time to go home after all of this is over, so. Oh, he does charge you, just afterwards. All right, fair enough. I don't need my money for anything else anyway, so. I'd say bring the least appropriate two members, but yeah, I mean, I could bring like Mojo and Fun Guy if we want to. <laughs> But they've all got stuff to say. Actually, the, the funny thing about Fun Guy is that we turned him into a Mushroom Man, and so he was trying to go after the Frozen Flame because he was like, no, that'll change me back, surely. He doesn't have any di extra dialogue if you do bring him to the Dragon God fight. Because, as far as I'm aware, all of that dialogue was cut from the game. There is dialogue in the game's code, like if you bring Norris or Radius there, they're supposed to say something about the Frozen Flame. Like, Radius is supposed to feel the pull of temptation from the flame and it feels the same to him as the mass immune so he says all the more reason to destroy it and then Norris actually has a, a thing about how the poor military wanted to bring the frozen flame back to the mainland and he said no I can't do that this thing is too powerful to be let to allowed to live um, but as far as I'm aware all of that dialogue was cut from the game so yeah that's not a good look but uh, yeah, it is what it is uh, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, so Fun Guy. So he said he wanted to go to the Frozen Flame to change himself back, right? Well, in the ending, if you bring him along for the final boss fight when he has the ending dialogue, he just says, Yeah, no, I'm pretty okay with being a Mushroom Man monster thing for the rest of my life, so uh, you're fine. I'm not going to kill you anymore. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? You went through all that trouble. Why are you even a character? What the hell, man? <laughs> Okay, but anyway, we have to go back to Homeworld Opasa Beach with the Time Egg in order to uh, make it to where the final boss is, so let's use the Astral Amulet to get back there. But as I said, Opasa Beach has undergone its own change, as you'll see in a moment. Yeah, the old El Paso Beach. That was a terrible southern accent. What the hell? I know what southern accents sound like. I live in the same country. Why would I do that? But Opasa Beach has changed form from Homeworld Opasa Beach to the cutting room floor. Welcome to NPC Dialogue the Screen. Chrono Luca and Marley as children are here. They don't look like ghosts anymore. And if you talk to them, all they will do is exposit at you about all of the bits and pieces of the story that are critical and required to understand 100% of Chrono Cross's story but uh, they couldn't fit anywhere into the game, either because they ran out of time or because they didn't know where they could put it into the script of the game. So that's just great. <laughs> uh, I'll save over this one. Yeah, and there's a tadpole in the water. I think so. I'd have to go look again. Maybe that's supposed to be frog. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they killed Robo. They turned Ayla into an analog with Leah. Uh, Magus is not actually Magus. He's Guile now. Good for him. He probably, at the very least, got off the best out of all of us because he doesn't have to deal with the, you know, bleaching his brain from Chrono Trigger being destroyed, all of his work being undone. And Chrono Luca and Marley are all dead. So, like, you know, that's a thing. Anyway, let's talk to Luca first because I'm sure that's important. Oh, it was a joke, but there could be one. Okay, yeah, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, catch that joke. That's my bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm here, Luca Ghost that isn't a ghost. I don't know, I feel like you'd know better, considering you were here. So, the point of these NPCs is to kind of tell you, because Chrono Cross doesn't trust its own uh, players to understand its plot. So it's going to wrap everything up for you in this dialogue box by telling you the exact story that it's been telling you for the past 15 hours, but also all of the bits and pieces of that story that they could not tell you or show you in those 15 hours will also be said in these dialogue boxes, and they will tell you all the important knowledge that you need to know to understand their convoluted-ass plot. So that's the point here. I'm going to try to go through all of this without going absolutely insane, but shortly after this, in the ending, Chrono Cross is also going to exposit at me with basic college year one level philosophy 101, so 
I may be insane by the end of all of this. Just a fair warning. If I'm not already insane, I'm going to be more insane. So. Yeah, gee, wonder who caused that to happen. Certainly wasn't you, but they definitely used your research for that. I would have thought Balthazar would have known better. Yeah, I mean, that was why Lavos ended up being able to do what he did in the first place, but you guys stopped that, and then Chrono Cross undid all of your hard work. I mean, I thought she just died, but, you know, apparently not. They they needed another villain for later, so they retconned Scala's death out of the plot and turned her into an eldritch abomination by having her fuse her existence with Lavos. So that's just great, and sh her human brain couldn't handle it, so she wanted to destroy existence, but also wanted to save existence, and she wanted to be a princess in another castle so she could be rescued. But in the process of falling through time, out of every possible person that has ever cried across all of time and space, any person that she could have saved, her brother, the other members of the Kingdom of Zeal, her mother before she turned into an asshole, all of those people, instead of hearing them crying for help or salvation or whatsoever, she hears this random fisherman's child in 1004 AD crying, and suddenly decides, I desperately want to save his life. Why? <laughs> what did I do? I feel like this would have been a better game without forcing the trigger crew in. Absolutely, I 100% agree. I certainly didn't understand in my teens. Yeah, no, I just... I, just, I Honestly, I still think there's pieces and parts of this that I just don't get, but like... I definitely feel like if this game was allowed to stand on its own merits, and I'll reiterate on this in the credits, but that's the gist of it. If this game was allowed to stand on its own merits, whether because the developers actually trusted it to do its own thing, or because the developers didn't have a hate boner for Chrono Trigger from the PTSD that they had from its development time, we'll get there, uh, I feel like it would have been a much better game. Every time Chrono Trigger comes up in Chrono Cross, it feels like a shoehorn just being put on top of the last shoehorn. <laughs> so... We undid Lavos's hard work. Ain't a shocker, something else would undo ours. Yeah, that's fair, honestly. If that's the way that they're going, then yeah. So, as a result of Scala hearing Surge crying from the panther demon's poison, still don't know how that works, panthers are not poisonous, but whatever. Um, it, she split time in half, so... And in order to try to save him, she caused some sort of magnetic storm, which caused uh, the system malfunction in Chronopolis, which led us to the Frozen Flame to become the Arbiter, so that we could eventually meet up with her in an attempt to rescue her. Like, I've seen some convoluted-ass plots in my RPGs before, but this is like a string of coincidences so long that it could probably wrap around the entire world map of this game. <laughs> so. But the coincidences continue, because this is also a line in an RPG. Before the destructive mindset could become dominant in Scala's mind, she cloned herself and sent her copy to this dimension. Okay, I'll bite. Who's the clone? And why did she make her a baby daughter clone? What the hell is a baby daughter clone? But she had a pendant, an amulet to be more precise. And that amulet basically caused any major danger to happen in her life to rewind her to before that and teleport her away from the danger, which would cause... A huge amount of time paradoxes, first of all, if time is linear the way that it is in every other piece of media, but let's just let Luca tell you, yeah, Kid is Scala's baby daughter clone with the astral amulet. Kid is the one who has experienced lost time because she was teleported away from danger. But, Luca, I have a question for you. If the amulet kept her safe from danger, why did it not teleport her away 
on the worst day of her life when your orphanage burned down and you died. That was the most danger she's ever been in in her life. And instead of her being teleported away, the amulet conveniently did not work that day. And I had to put my ass on the line to go back in time to save her from being killed so that this whole fucking game couldn't happen. Why? Why would you do that? Yes, a kid had save states. She certainly wasn't a Viper Man. Yeah, and that's another thing. Like, kid's been in danger in several situations in this game. At Viper Manor, she... You know, got poisoned. Where was the amulet then? She had it on her. It's not like she handed it to me and I was holding it when she got stabbed. Hello? <laughs> but we're not done. It's going to keep going. <laughs> the project is called Project Kid because this game desperately, desperately wants you to like Kid. And explicitly because Chronopolis and the time crash and all that stuff, that was planned by Balthazar. You know, the guy that told us in Chrono Trigger, you know, I'm giving you this time egg to save Chrono, but please don't mess with time again. We can't afford all the bullshit. Yeah, he messed with time again, explicitly to bring Surge to Scala. And Kid won't know any of this until she gets older, when in the future she will travel back to 10 years ago to save me from being drowned by my own father. We'll get there in a minute. <laughs> but Wazaki is the one that tried to drown Surge 10 years ago. And also, Kid is the whole reason why I blacked out on the beach after collecting Komodo scales for the other world's Lena, because she sent me here, not here, from this beach to the other world with the astral amulet without me knowing. Yeah, what a great dad. <laughs> Yeah, she'll live. She'll be fine. The poison won't kill her. So, all of this to get us in contact with a character that we all thought died in the last game. But Scala is very much alive and definitely will destroy and collapse all of time in on itself if we don't go save her from this game's own hubris. And... All of that falls to a random teenager from a fishing village, because this wouldn't be an RPG if it didn't fall to random teenagers from villages that have absolutely no right killing gods. But, you know, it's a, it's a JRPG, so there it is. Excuse me. Yeah, Angelus Arare, if I remember correctly from what Balthazar said. I don't know why he suddenly started spouting Latin, I would imagine that is, but whatever. Well, that's just, like, your opinion, man. I like living, so I'm going to call it the homeworld. But, yeah, so I mentioned, yeah, uh, Serge's dad was the one that tried to kill him. Kronos says it was Lynx. What are the chances that those two people are the same? Couldn't possibly happen, right? Well, watch them spin a fucking yarn to tell you how this is true. Uh, so Robo was the reason why... Fate and the Frozen Flame got unlinked and I became the Arbiter. And Fate was pretty pissed about that. So, uh, in order to prevent that, well, we'll see what Fate does. But in the meantime, Harley, the aspect of the Seventh Dragon, uh, met up with this biological incarnation of Fate called Lynx, which was Lynx long before my father tried to drown me. So I don't know how that works. I don't know how... Because Serge's father came back with Serge after he was healed. I don't know how that could happen, considering at that point, according to this... Well, you'll see in a second. There's just too many questions, man. And my dad... The furry! He's a furry! Oh, no! Uh, yeah, so everybody was trying to gun for the Prometheus circuit, which I feel like this is something Luca should have said, but whatever. Uh, yeah, no, abduction and killing her in a fire are two completely different things. Didn't I give Luca, like, a red vest or something in Chrono Trigger because she didn't have any better armor or something like that? Wasn't she, like, immune to fire or absorb fire? Why did she die? <laughs> what the hell, guys? Anyway, yeah, so they couldn't get Luca, she died, so instead of that, they just waited for me. Because, according to Fate's calculations... Instead of staying in my fishing village, fate calculated that I would eventually cross through the dimensions and go through this whole 50 hours of nonsense. 
And, yeah, I guess I spoiled it a few minutes beforehand, but you could probably put the pieces together at this point. Fate's biological incarnation was actually Serge's father. And I have another question for you, Chrono Cross. Because... I'm going to wait for the specific line of dialogue that talks about this, but... Yeah, apparently it just caused his form to be completely altered by fate in the process of just about losing Surge. Okay, now, let's be clear. I am aware of what the word model means. It does not reflect reality. It's an ideal, right? Here's my question for you, Chrono Cross. You showed me the panther demon in cutscenes. You showed me Lynx. How... On Earth, did a supercomputer with the knowledge of every life form on this planet get the fucking thing that almost killed me wrong when it transmogrified my father into a furry? It didn't turn him into a panther, it turned him into a lynx. It says it right there on his name tag. What are you doing? <laughs> Were you just the result of a furry convention that he regretted? Boy, I hope not. God, I, I don't even want to find out. Also, by some astronomical chances, Fur Affinity, the website, got majorly hacked recently when we beat Lynx. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's a hell of a coincidence. Must be more time paradoxes this game is causing. But, yeah, so eventually he turned into... Which, technically speaking, means that I was inhabiting my father's body for a while there, even though it wasn't really his anymore. But... Whatever. Why would you want to do that as a supercomputer? You already know everything. Well, it has eyeballs, Chrono. Of course it gazes back at you. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Let's go talk to Marley. She's the last one, and then we can finally finish this shit. <laughs> Maybe they couldn't fit Panther in the English name box. Does anyone have a seven-loader name? That's actually a fair point, honestly. Because... Um, I don't think anyone in this game has a seven-letter name, now that I think about it. I mean, you know, like, the NPCs, like Water Dragon, that has more than seven letters in it, but... Obviously, when they when you name a character, which, since we were inhabiting his body, we wouldn't... I mean, we wouldn't be named Lynx or Panther or whatever, but... <laughs> they could have just done the edgy thing. Like, they could have done what they did with Feraligator when they had a, a character limit in Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal. They could have just named him Panther with the E omitted. But I feel like that would have just been silly. <laughs> could have called him Big Cat instead. Or, here's another thought. Just don't make it a Panther demon. Make it a Lynx demon. Like, in the dialogue, just omit the word Panther and put Lynx in there. Because it's like, okay, that's less than six letters. Boom. Done. Uh... Make it a jaguar. J-A-G-U-A-R. Six letters. There you go. Make it a jaguar instead. Just change the model around. I know that's hard. It's an FMV cutscene, but like just just change the just change the big cat, okay? Like change which one we're we're working with here. And you would have been perfectly fine. <laughs> you know, the one that you guys killed. Let's get back on topic here. The the Lavos that you guys killed before that was control Z'd from the timeline. Yeah, noticed that. You guys actually, well, technically not you, because it was Magus, uh, who did I have fighting? I think I had Magus, Robo, and Frog? Or was it Magus, Robo, and Ayla? Might have been Magus, Ayla, and Frog, actually, because Slurp Kiss was pretty powerful. Uh, but I definitely had Magus and a couple of other people fighting the Dream Devourer, which is the prototypical version of the Time Devourer, so... Why would I want Lavos to evolve at all? I want to erase him from existence. He's caused all of this shit, so I want him gone. I mean, I won't be able to kill him because Chrono Cross can't have you killing things. The whole point of the plot in Chrono Cross, you see, is that we all need to live in peace and harmony with one another, engaged shoulder to shoulder and on equal playing fields. And in about five minutes... I'm going to have one final question for it that will throw all of that out the fucking window, but we'll get there. Yeah, I don't think I want that. So, at the exact... See, and this is another thing, right? 2300 is the exact time period that we went to in the future in Chrono Trigger. When, that means that after Chrono Trigger happened, when the good future just snapped into reality... 
Balthazar went there, immediately built a supercomputer that would last 100 years and would cause all of this crazy shit to happen. Immediately. It was completed within the year. Like, I would think they would have been, I don't know, picking up the pieces of everything that they lost and enjoying the greenery and everything else rather than, oh, gotta go do technology shit. Okay. But this is the most important thing that these guys say is from Marley here. The Chrono Cross is the seventh element. We've heard a melody for the past several hours. Yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. It's missing something. It's missing the Chrono Cross. It has its own melody, its own single harmonizing note that will bring the whole song together. And I actually really like that because, as you'll see in a moment, it's used to play the ending song of the game. But, well, we got to do that first. So, now that we've listened to that, and I have not quite gone insane yet, let me just make sure our preparations are all complete one last time because I don't feel like running away from God 2 Electric Boogaloo. Yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. And Chrono Cross. Okay, we have everything we need. We are all set and ready to go. Let's use the time egg on this time anomaly and finish this up once and for all. Everybody get in position. I can't teleport unless you're in the right place. Yep, this is it. Well, we could find a way through song since apparently that works pretty well. Music will soothe the, soothe the savage beast and all that. And for the sake of all the people that live on this planet, past, future, and every other dimension, Lavos, I will destroy you with music. Fun fact, this boss was added to the DS version of Chrono Trigger. Yes, we fought it, actually, in the bonus episode. Although it was called the Dream Devourer there. But here is my final question for you, Chrono Cross. We are here to try to save Scala. Now, Scala, in case you don't remember, was a major important NPC in Chrono Trigger from the Kingdom of Zeal. She was a tall, slender woman with blue hair and blue eyes. So here is the question I pose to all of you. Who the hell is that? If you said kid, congratulations, you're correct, that is kid. If you said Scala, congratulations, you're also correct, that is also Scala. They're clones, as we've established already from the cutting room floor back on Opasa Beach. But now I have a follow-up question. In this video game, that is supposed to be about the harmony between races, everybody settling their differences peacefully, and all singing kumbaya around a campfire as we all stand shoulder to shoulder, equal among the different various cultures and races. Everybody is just as important as everybody else. In a game where that is the theme around which everything revolves, why on earth would you change Scala's facial features to have blonde hair and blue eyes. Did you forget? Do you not remember history classes? Did it just slip your fucking minds that the most hateful and xenophobic group of supremacists in the history of, well, okay, maybe not the history of the world, but in recent memory, over the past century, just so happened to idealize people with blonde hair and blue eyes as the superior being, de facto better than every other person on Earth. Why, Chrono Cross, would you take your game about peace among the different people on this planet and turn your princess, your damsel in distress that you want me to save into an Aryan person. Why would you do that? You are undermining your entire fucking message by doing this. Because you wanted her to be fucking blonde. 
Let's get this over with. So, Time Devourer. We have to play the seven elements in that order. Yellow, red, green, blue, black, white, Chrono Cross. Now, the astute among you may be wondering how the hell we're going to do that, because we can only cast six spells in a row before all of our stamina is gone, and then the boss casts their own spell. There's a trick to it. We'll get to that in a second. Let me read chat so that we can go back. Maybe Scala dyed her hair blue. Yes. Actually, that's a funny thing you mentioned that, because there's a throwaway line from an NPC in the PS1 version, I think the English translation specifically of Chrono Trigger. Only in the PS1 translation, though, where they say, hey, so the people of the Kingdom of Zeal dye their hair. It's funny. It's coincidentally funny, isn't it, that they put that in the PS1 version and then didn't include it in any of the other translations. And the PS1 translation came out shortly after this game came out. Isn't that funny? Isn't that really fucking funny? I'm laughing so fucking hard at it. <laughs> Play the eight melodies to Pete Geignan 10. Yeah, something like that. Oh, God. I guess nobody's allowed to have blonde hair and blue eyes after Nazis. I just think that it's... It's, it's not that nobody's allowed, right? It's just... This is a game where that's the whole theme. The whole theme is that people are supposed to be on equal platforms with one another. And then they just do this. It's like nobody thought that was a bad idea. No, not a single person in the entire development team said, you know, maybe we shouldn't give her blonde hair and blue eyes. That's had a historical precedent that is the antithesis of the theme of the whole game. I just... Maybe I'm thinking too deeply about it. It's definitely possible. It would not be the first time. But it's just not a good look. It's really not a good look. That's all I'm saying. Uh, okay, so let's get on track here. So we have all of our elements at level 1. So we really only need level 2 to get them all off. But I'm going to get Surge to level 3. Said I'm gonna get surged to level three. I'm gonna go to level four just because you dodged that one. How about that? We'll get everybody to level four. I would get everybody to level six, but well, actually I can in fact do that so that I can be superstitious here. Hope you're not superstitious, Lavos. All right, one one. Lena, I swear to God. It's fine. She's got enough now. So Lavos will start out casting green elements. He'll cast Omega Green on you if you're not careful as well, so... Yeah, that's a thing. But once we get up to that amount, it's like we're summoning something. So what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves to that point, and then we're going to defend until everybody has seven stamina. So just have everybody defend. There's the Omega Green. It'll probably hurt a little bit. We haven't put the Minish up after all, but we won't need it for where we're going. Okay, so now, start with Surge, because he has the Chrono Cross, so he has to be the last one to cast, so. Yeah, I'm probably overthinking it. Yeah, Scala gives a salute. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, no, it was true all along! <laughs> Alright, but we're all at 7 stamina. No, we're not. Radius is not quite there, so let's not run away. There we go. Alright, now Radius is at 7 stamina. So now we can cast. So, uh, start with Surge. He's got the... Uh, He's got the first element in the group, so yellow. Now, Lena. She's got she's got red at level four, but I'm gonna need her to have some el extra element power anyway because, you know, we need to cast all these spells in a row. So now red. Radius, you're up. Sonic Boom. Okay, next surge. Blue. Oh boy, this is nostalgic. This is the spell that murdered me in the tutorial. How fitting I'd use it to kill the final boss. Well, not kill, but, you know. Use it against the final boss. Now a black element.
And then, last but not least, a quick old Kamehameha, and that will set us all up. Now, as I said, we're all out of stamina at this point, so at this point, Lavos could interrupt us. But as you'll see in a second, that doesn't happen. If you play the six elements in that exact order, yellow, red, green, blue, black, white, Lavos will freeze. Because, obviously, you don't have any stamina to cast the last spell. So, Lavos will freeze to allow you to cast the spell. If you cast anything other than the Chrono Cross at this point, Lavos will just start attacking you again, and you'll have to do the whole sequence all over again. Uh, but, keep that in mind. Because, that flag may or may not be present, even if you don't have the Chrono Cross equipped. If you know what I mean. If you don't, well, the bonus episode will... Scratch that itch, so we'll get there, but for now, let's harmonize. And that's it. That's the full melody. Like Todovsky before me, I have found my rhythm. Now, for all the overthinking that I just did, I actually really love this concept. Like, in a vacuum, right? If music was more of a prevailing concept throughout the game, like, it was more of a thing that you did all over the place, and this was the final sort of find the rhythm and get it correct and you get the true ending thing, I would feel much more strongly about this boss fight. And also, if, you know, Chrono Trigger wasn't shoehorned all the way to hell into here. I would feel much more strongly about this whole sequence, because you make the melody that they then use as the ending theme for this game. And that's just, it hits a whole bunch of different correct places for me, right? It hits leitmotif, it hits at the fact that your gameplay organically causes the music to change, it's dynamic, the scene is beautiful for a PS1 scene, really just... If it wasn't for the sour taste in my mouth from what happened right before this, I would love this. This is the part of Chrono Cross that I can see the potential in that I want more of, but it keeps muddling itself on, right? There, there's pieces here where I'm just like, no, this, this could be so interesting. And it just, it just goes its own way. And when it goes its own way, it always comes back to shitting on Chrono Trigger, which just... You, you just could have been yourself. You just could have been yourself, Chrono Cross, and all this could have been avoided. Anyway, let's... Now that we got her out of that... Let's let her philosophize, because she's just waking up, having lost time for a while, so now she needs to get all of her thoughts together. And by doing so, she's going to make bizarre thought processes about just extrapolating and expositing on why are we born? Why do we die? What is the purpose of evolution? Okay, like, Scala, okay. Like, <laughs> listen. Oh, yeah, and then there's this. <laughs> this is how you know she hasn't had her coffee yet or something in the morning because she just says the word spermatozoa like okay that's the, no scala that's not how this works okay like you get, the beings on a planet do not inseminate the planet okay why why is this your metaphor 
Are you expecting teenagers to take this seriously? You have the word inseminates in there. None of them are listening anymore. <laughs> All they can think about is the fact that this is a sex joke. I just... Okay, if that's where you want to go with this, but... It's funny, though, because a lot of this is like... Yeah, at this point, you're just rehashing the whole overarching theme of Evo, the search for Eden. It's not the first time this game has reminded me of that game, but there you go. But this is the apotheosis moment, right? This is, this is where the game tells you what its philosophy is and why you should listen to it. And it's choosing to tell you this philosophy in the form of insemination. It could be you, as it turns out. Where's the line? It's got to be here somewhere. Hold on, we've got to find it. I think it's right after this one. I'm glad you feel that way because it does, in fact, help with the overarching theme of the game that you almost just destroyed by whitewashing, not even whitewashing, Aryanizing Scala. Other weird thing, though, about it, too, is that why is she so short now? Like, she was taller than everybody in the main cast except Magus. Now she's, like, shrank down. I, th I think, if I remember correctly, people have theorized that she shrank down because the time dilation when she fell through the time stream caused her to turn younger or something. But that's literally you writing the game's plot for the developers. Please don't do that. You're not paid to do that. They are. Make them write it. <laughs> And also, the game makes this reference to Zervin, which apparently was really important to this game's writer, because apparently, when the third Chrono game comes out, which it never did, it was going to be all about Zervin, the Sea of Dreams. You've never referenced Zervin before this. Zervin will never be referenced again in a Chrono game, because there is no other Chrono game. Why even put that in here? It's not going to make sense to somebody. Where's the line? Listen, listen, lady, you're losing my interest, okay? Please get on with this. <laughs> okay, now I want you to remember this line. I want you to remember that she says this here. You will lose all memory of this whole adventure and return to your own time. It was all a dream surge. Go back to sleep. Yeah, there was a line in here somewhere where I, I might have passed it up because she's not on that subject anymore. But there was a line in here somewhere where she says, It could be you. You could be the one that inseminates the planet and causes everyone to evolve into a higher being. They, I don't think they say it in those direct words. Maybe that's just me remember, misremembering it from my own brain. But, like, is that how you want to teach your philosophy to people? by saying that they're impregnating a planet because, like, Jesus Christ, you could pick different words. You could definitely pick different words. I guess at least I get to live my own life. Please, let's head back home. I've had enough of this shit for one lifetime. Yeah, and one other person. Your counterpart. Yeah. That's where we all belong, so... So that that way time doesn't get dil dilated again, I gotta go back. Well, listen. Don't let him go, okay? He's gone, but he's there in your heart. So if Kid won't listen to me about this, please you listen to me. Keep him in your heart. He'll always be there for you. I'll, I'll try. Well, yeah, I mean, we all work together, and then we fix it, and we solve things, so... Oh, what the hell? You two fused together again? How does that even work? Kid, where did you come from? Yeah, so now, not only did they do whatever the hell they did to the biology of Scala, now Kid's fusing back into her, and it's giving her Kid's accent. How are you in there? <laughs> no, no, Kid, listen to me. I told you this when you were a child. You may be traumatized from what happened at the orphanage. I would not blame you if you forgot what I said. But as a child, when I saved your life, I told you, live your own life. 
Do not live it in any way beholden to any other person. If you live your life exclu exclusively searching for me, you will not be living for yourself anymore. You'll be living for someone else, and you will never find your own way in this world. Please, I am begging you, live for yourself, goddammit! Can you even hear me in there? She's gone. Well, we all know she wasn't a very good listener. Something else Chrono Cross took away from her. God damn it. This is the roasting of Scala. Who knew? Oh, who's trying to good morning me now? Yeah, she went back to her home planet, Space Australia. <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway, where the hell was I for the past 51 hours? Well, I hit my head. That's what's the matter. Do I have a concussion? Can you look in my eyes? But Hang on, no. Pick your head up, Serge, so she can look in your eyes and see if you have a concussion from passing out. Okay. So now we can add Compulsive Liar to the list of things that Kid and Scala are, because apparently what she just said about me not remembering anything was a total fabrication. I remember everything. I remember Terra Tower. I remember Fate. At the very least, I remember everything that happened on disc two. Kid, why would you say that? Was it a mistranslation? That's the only thing I can think. It was all a bad dream, Serge, and I wish that wasn't what they're going to say, but it wasn't a bad dream. The game happened, but Lena's going to treat it like it was a bad dream. Even despite the fact that she met her alternate world counterpart, apparently Surge remembers this stuff, but nobody else does. Honestly, Lena, that was so long ago, I barely remember it. Yeah, like I said, I might have a concussion. Can you look in my eyes and see if the pupils are different sizes? Please. But no, Lena's going to treat it like it was all a bad dream. Instead of, you know, helping you with... The trauma that you have. She's just going to tell you to get with the program and move on. Uh, I hate to break it to you, Lena, but for me, my summer vacation is over. I've got sand in my pupils. Get it out. I can't believe we took 51 hours to find out that my would-be girlfriend was gonna be toxic to me when I had trauma? What the hell, man? How does that even happen? Thus the curtain closes on another tale. An eternity has passed, fleeting dreams fade into the distance. All that is left now is me and my memories. But I'm sure we'll meet again. Someday, you and I. Another place, another time. It's just that we might not realize that you are you, and I am me. Let us open the door to the great unknown. Come across another reality, and live another today. Even when the story has been told, life goes on. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, my friend. Forever yours, Scala Kid Zeal. So as it turns out, Kid was the one writing the memoirs in the very beginning of the game. And apparently she got night vision in the time that she grew up because her eyeballs are so wide there that it's a wonder that she can see anything at all. There is another man with her in that picture. It's never implied who it is. Well, I guess it's implied that it's Surge, but considering the fact that we treated her like garbage for most of this playthrough, something tells me she didn't get married to Surge. So who did she get married to? Well. Actually, the bonus episode will, might give us a clue, but we'll get there. For now, that's the game, everybody. Please forgive the Matrix destroying the quality of the images there. It's just the game trying to reset itself or something to spite me at the very end. I don't freaking know. And then he and Lena have a kid and he drowns him. The future refused to change. God damn, that's dark. Wait, what the hell is going on there? That wasn't a scene from the game. Anybody else see that? I don't think we found any checkered hallways. 
huh? So what do I say about Chrono Cross? Uh, I still think the best way that I can describe my thoughts on the game are it's complicated. I definitely think that there's promise here. I definitely think there's potential. And I feel like if the game wasn't so bloody beholden to Chrono Trigger, whether it was because it was marketed to be a sequel to Chrono Trigger, even though the developers have said it's not, it is in fact the definition of a sequel, its plot cannot exist without Chrono Trigger, what the hell is that? That fence is not anywhere in the game. What the hell is that? <laughs> okay. I guess we'll figure that one out as we go. Um, yeah, so it, it's a sequel. It's a sequel to Chrono Trigger. And I think, honestly, I feel like Chrono Cross is pissed that it has to be a sequel to Chrono Trigger. There's a lot of situations in this game where it just shits on its legacy. In ways that are actively mean. Like... It kills characters that were from the first game, left and right, without any regard for the good that they did. It says, as a matter of fact, in certain cases, it says the good they did was actually bad, because it did terrible things that Chrono Cross invented in order to create a plot that it thinks is more interesting. The plot mostly ends up being more convoluted as a result, because Chrono Cross is not particularly good at explaining itself. It, it's just... It's too complex a narrative for a game like this, okay? Like, the reason why Chrono Trigger is beloved is not because of the PTSD that you guys have from the crunch time that the game caused you to have to crunch for, right? Chrono Trigger's development, from what I understand, was very troubled. And a lot of the people that ended up being in charge of Chrono Cross were like, that was like the first game they developed for Square. So, I, I imagine a lot of them were pretty bitter about the fact that their first experience in the gaming industry caused them to have to work hours and hours over time and have sleepless nights and everything else. And instead of going to therapy, because in the 90s therapy was not really something that anybody except for fringe, a fringe audience did, instead of going to therapy they took their frustrations out on Chrono Trigger in a lot of cases in Chrono Cross's plot. And it shows. like. The game is very bitter towards all of its Chrono Trigger shoehorning. And I wish it wasn't. Because honestly, I see where it could have been its own thing. And it could have been great. If it didn't take itself so seriously. If it allowed its own its plot to stand on its own two feet. It would have been silly. And it wouldn't have been super serious. There would have been more serious moments, I think, in Chrono Cross than in Chrono Trigger because of all the stuff with Lynx. But if it didn't feel such an expressed desire to always return to Chrono Trigger, I feel like Chrono Cross would have been as good as Chrono Trigger, genuinely. Like, I, I feel like the, the whole twist with the Dragon Gods was really interesting, if that was more of a focus, and if they focused more on the musical aspects of the game, where the music was a big part of the culture in the El Nido Archipelago, and then they could have focused on the cultures being a bigger part of the plot, because then music and cultures and festivals and all that stuff goes together, you get to see how the people live, you get to see how the people come together, or how they separate, and then you could actively involve yourself in those people. If it would have allowed for more Goldovians in the party to have a major role, because the Goldovians have literally been in the archipelago for as long as the Draconians? Oh, oh no. Oh no. That's 10 4 square. And that's Kid. She actually traveled too far across the time stream. She ended up in ending E of Drakengard. She's gonna be murdered by the salt disease. I need to call out to her. Kid, I don't care if you weren't a character I enjoyed. Get out of there now! She didn't hear me, did she? Well, because she was belligerent and wouldn't live her own life, now... She will die of assault disease and be a victim of near gestalt, near replicant. No, she's she's actually fine. I'm just joking. She's right here. But apparently she traveled to 10-4 because they were being serious when they said we might not recognize each other when she wrote her memoirs. She actually traveled to reality to find you, the player. So now Kid is a horror movie villain. That's great. That's fantastic. The end. <laughs>
Cross. Look how happy that trigger is. I want to ruin its day. Kid was an isekai character all along. Something like that. I took that a little bit different. I she, Because the little slow turn, all it had to do was her turn and her face be like mangled and fucked up. And all of a sudden this would be a fatal frame game, you know? Like, oh my lord. So... She's so beautiful. Good day, mate. Shrimp on the bobby. She would. She wouldn't even say stuff like that. She'd be like beating me up and saying the word bloody every other word. But yeah, I just feel like if Chrono Cross wasn't beholden to Chrono Trigger, I feel like it would be a much better game. I think that its plot in a vacuum is interesting. It's a nice little exploratory thing. The archipelago is a very summery place to go, especially if you know you don't get to visit a location like that. And it's a very good way for them to use the fact that several of the high-ranking members of Square went to Southeast Asia on a vacation. They got to redo this idea in Final Fantasy X and in Kingdom Hearts as... And they literally, it's like a rehashing of what they did here, but they did it differently. Like in Final Fantasy X, island setting, character gets transported to another world. Kingdom Hearts, island setting, character gets transported to another world. Chrono Cross was the prototype of those things. Chrono Cross was the beta. I just wish it didn't have to exist as a beta. It could have existed as its own thing, but because it has to exist alongside Chrono Trigger, and because it has to live in the shadow of it, it's worse off for living in the shadows. Instead of stepping out of the shadow and just doing its own thing, even if it wasn't exquisitely related, like, even if it wasn't like, like, even if all they said was, okay, the Kingdom of Zeal exists in Chrono Cross's universe, it takes place in Chrono Trigger's world, it's just a separate area where Chrono and his friends can't get to. Okay, fine, whatever. Because then you have a whole universe that you can open up. You have this potential for time travel, dimensional travel, and all that other stuff that you could make multiple different games in, but you wrote this game and now you're stuck in a corner. You can't really do anything with this after this because you'd have to retcon more things in order for the next Chrono game to exist. And I just, I really hate because there was, I think if I remember correctly, there was one time where the, the writer for this game, who was also the writer for Chrono Trigger, so I don't know how I feel about that, but he said something on like an interview or social media or something where he was talking about the, the, the third Chrono game. And he told you like this little plot summary where the characters from Chrono Trigger and Surge and Kid and Guile, who's actually Magus, would all team up to go to Zervan and take down Lavos again or some shit. And he said, imagine that as the third game in your mind's eye. And I'm like, just no, fuck you, dude. Like, I don't want any other part of this, okay? Every time you go to write, if that's what you think you want to make the third Chrono game, then I'm glad Chrono Cross didn't get a sequel. Because that sounds like you're retconning everything that you've done in the past two games just to make another one. You already did enough of that in this one. Please stop. Yeah, it was Chrono Break. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that, I think that was the name of the game. But it's just like... I don't know. It's like I said, my relationship with Chrono Cross is complicated. I think that in a vacuum, it has the potential to be a good game, but it gets muddled in a lot of places by being beholden to things that are not it. And as a result of all of those things that it gets muddled on, the philosophies that it can't teach because it's not well written enough to teach those philosophies in a meaningful way, it stumbles over its words, the cultures that it attempts to erase by not having enough Goldovians and Draconians be a part of your party as major players in the story, their bit characters at the most, the, the references back to Chrono Trigger that effectively nullify all of the good that you did in the previous game, all of the characters that you learned to love, all of the story that you learned to enjoy, all of it gone because Chrono Cross was bitter about it. The problem is... I think Chrono Cross desperately wanted to not be Chrono Trigger. And it got its wish, but not in the way that it wanted to. It wanted to have its own identity. But by living so much in Chrono Trigger's shadow, it could never become its own thing. It had to step outside of that shadow to be its own thing, and it chose not to do that. It chose to be bitter, and it chose to talk about things that it couldn't talk about because it wasn't written in a way that could talk about those things meaningfully. It just needed to not take itself so seriously. I understand, it's a more mature game. There's a lot more death and 
bad things that happen in this game than in Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger was more like a Saturday morning cartoon compared to some of this stuff, but... If it didn't take itself so seriously, I think it would be a much better game. So that's why, in the special bonus episode of Chrono Cross the Stream Edition, we are going to play through the silliest alternate ending that this game has, shitposting the whole way through, and I will have a much more fun time of it. I am 100% certain of that. <laughs> so, Chrono Break. Chrono, give me a break. Yeah, there we go. Because of that, that's why we gotta play some more of it. Yeah, because I apparently I haven't had enough of it. Now, I will say, I want to keep this save file right here where we just got the Chrono Cross, because we can use that for something in the bonus episode. But I'm going to... So I'm not going to save over that one. I'll just save over this one and it'll be fine. And then we'll save over that third file when we're doing the New Game Plus stuff. But like Chrono Trigger, this game has alternate endings that are available... Excuse me. When you... Uh, you, you make a clear save, and then you continue off of that clear save. So, in order to demonstrate some of those things, just like we did in Chrono Trigger, we're going to go and play one of the alternate endings, and we're going to give the two characters in our party that were kind of replaced by other people a chance to shine. So, Macha, Fiona, get yourselves ready, because you are going to be helping me defeat Lavos again, once and for all, Ideally, to get an ending that's different from this one on a special bonus episode of Chrono Cross the Stream Edition, which will be happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It was post. Was it a Shiba Inu behind it all in the development room? Yeah, just pushing all the buttons like that one other alternate ending in. Actually, we're not going to play that game. In Silent Hill 2? We'll play Silent Hill 4 for the stream. I have that one, but I don't I don't have Silent Hill 2, so we won't be able to find that out. But yeah, it was Poshal all along, pulling the strings. And I could include Poshal, but Poshal's already done enough. Poshal dug up Turnip for me, so that was good enough. We'll, we'll have Macha and Fiona be the characters that come with us. So She's been plotting all of this since Karsh kicked her off the cliff. She realized that people in this world are terrible and can't live because they all... Because Karsh kicked a dog, no one else gets to live. <laughs> So there you go, yeah, we'll do some new game plus shenanigans, and hopefully we'll be shitposting the whole way through on the bonus episode of Chrono Cross the Stream Edition, which will be happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So thank you for watching, everybody. I appreciate you coming out to Twitch and YouTube to check out the stream. And I'll see all of you on the next one, which, as I said, will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Until then, everybody, take care, and have a good one. And I wish I could say that this screen is the last that we'll see of Kid, but she actually has a part to play in the bonus episode as well. I'll explain what it is when we get that far, but she has a part to play. That's for sure. Could you imagine if the entire game changed because you took optional potion at the start? <laughs> now that would be a flag that... I don't know this. I feel like this game already has a lot of flags with the other characters. It would probably be hard to program, but it would be really funny if it was. Yeah. So.